Hamas's reports responded by claiming a succession of damaging strikes against Israel. Joining me live from Washington is the Palestinian writer and analyst Yusuf Munir. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. How different is uh, the situation in terms of the use of social media from what it was in the past when these conflicts arose? Well, there's a big difference today um, and, and, and every day that goes by, these technological advancements are really changing the landscape and, and the battlefield, the virtual battlefield, and, and, and the battlefield really uh, in the war of ideas. Uh, and if you look, for example, in, in 2008, 2009, during the Israeli assault uh, on Gaza, um, you know, it was, it was very difficult to get um, images out at the time in the way that we can see conflict um, being recorded and transmitted instantaneously today with tools uh, like uh, Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and, and, and social media especially. The biggest effect, I think, it has been that, you know, ordinary people uh, now are able to have a voice in the greater discourse uh, by participating through these tools. In the past, states were far more uh, able to control the discourse, control the information and the messaging. And this, I think, is a tremendous disadvantage to the Israelis who in the past could close off the Gaza Strip to uh, journalists and hope to limit uh, the, uh, the information that comes out of there about the, the terrible violations of, of human rights and destruction and, and, and civilian casualties. Today, that is far more difficult to do. Uh, and, and so that openness, I think, is, is making life very difficult for Israeli propagandists who are spinning at uh, top speed at the moment. I suppose both sides are spinning, aren't they? I mean, we've heard that uh, the Hamas have also been putting out things on not just on television, but also via Twitter. I mean, do you think that actually ordinary people are going to read this stuff or they're just going to dismiss it as, well, this is just the kind of voice piece of whoever it is? And do you think they're going to actually be, pay more attention to ordinary people who are tweeting and blogging and so on? Right, I think that's the point. I mean, we need to we need to differentiate between so the sort of official uh, media mouthpieces on social media of whether it's the Israeli government or any of the factions in Gaza and and the people. And I think what we're able to do now that we didn't have before is have instantaneous access to people on the ground who are not party to any of these factions or governments and groups and hear directly from them about what's going on. I mean, my Twitter feed is filled, uh, you know, constantly with people saying a bomb just went off outside of my house. Uh, you know, the, the, the drones are, are, are firing missiles and shaking the ground below our feet. You know, this is, this is the kind of information that was never available before. Today we have it. And it, uh, again, is making life extremely difficult for the Israelis who want to pretend uh, that, uh, you know, what is happening in Gaza is not as tragic uh, as it is and is simply a security problem. This is not just a security problem. This is a humanitarian catastrophe, uh, and the people in the firing line, more often than not, are civilians. And in Gaza, of course, as we know, 80% of these people are refugees, 50% of these people are children. Okay. Uh, this is the reality that is being conveyed today in ways that, that could not have been conveyed in the past. Okay, Yusuf Munir, thank you very much indeed uh, for coming to talk to us. Good to be with you. And don't forget, you can always keep up to date uh, with our coverage of the situation in Gaza and Israel with our website.